As I was preparing uh, for today, I thought I'd, I'd uh, refresh my memory on the material that was used to, uh, to promote uh, the conference. And uh, I, I think the language which was, was used, that we can, uh, we can live healthier, happier lives from zero to 100 years and beyond. And uh, it went on to say, many health professionals and community leaders uh, believe that healthy and happy aging is not simply about medical advancements, but about our lifestyle, our diet, and ultimately finding and enjoying our purpose in life. And I thought the premise behind that was so entirely consistent with the future uh, Guernsey vision. And for those of you who, uh, it, both in the room and, and, and those outside and outside the island, future Guernsey is uh, the plan for, uh, for Guernsey as a community uh, f with, a, with a vision that we should become one of the healthiest and happiest uh, communities in the world. And that is what is driving our, our government planning process. Uh, and indeed, it is intended to be the framework in which a government business and the community can, can plan for their future uh, on, uh, on our beautiful island. And I think uh, it, it then uh, went on to say, of course, the rising cost of healthcare and ageing uh, is uh, a global uh, issue. And of course, that absolutely chimes uh, with some of our own challenges because we do have, uh, as, uh, as the, note, the note says, uh, elsewhere, as with elsewhere, an unsustainable model. We are seeing that uh, exponential rise in costs I if we don't do something about it. And so uh, developing a, a new model of, of care that meets the needs of the population um, that, that is sustainable and that is equitable it is absolutely one of our priorities and, and has been debated uh, in our assembly, in our parliament uh, only, uh, uh, only this week. Um, we need to focus on the fact that to, we need to be concentrating on what we need as a community. Uh, we have the challenge that expectations are very high. Some of those expectations, I would suggest, uh, are set by the medical community. Uh, and probably by, uh, by uh, the, the big industries that go alongside that as well, um, uh, without necessarily the desire in the community to necessarily meet the cost of that. So uh, to be truly sustainable, we absolutely need to place greater emphasis on, uh, on early uh, prevention and early intervention. Uh, and we absolutely need more support in the community, and I think that absolutely spoke to uh, James's very uh, brief introduction about the role of of community and, and the better en engagement and partnership that goes with that. And of course, people do need to take greater responsibility uh, for their lives. And we, we as a community need to uh, enable people to, to do that. Um, the better use of technology, of course, no doubt uh, plays a part uh, as well. And we need to be, um, and, and this is the, the culture which uh, I think health, th th those in our health and social care area may become increasingly used to, although a little perhaps uncomfortable with at the moment, we need to be more customer-centred. And, and we're choosing that word with, with care um, rather than being patient-centred, because patient-centred, of course, always implies, uh, implies that there is something, that, this, that the, there is an illness that can be treated, that can be mended, uh, uh, as opposed to uh, providing um, a, a, a service-type relationship. And we need to, uh, ultimately, we need to be thinking uh, and working differently. And I think that's what really this uh, conference is clearly uh, so, so all about. And th the material then goes on to say that Guernsey has the potential to show the world how factors such as community, purpose in life, preventative health care, and a proactive approach to well-being could make it the first country uh, to have an average life expectancy of 100. And, and I absolutely uh, endorse that, that uh, aspiration and believe that we do genuinely have that potential. It is my ambition, as some of you may have heard me say, that Guernsey uh, should be capable of being a test bed for so many different ideas uh, and, and technologies and, um, and concepts. You know, we have that, uh, what I've described before, as being the walled garden. We're a small, uh, closed community where we can try things and they can be observed and then th that can be replicated elsewhere with the benefit of that experience. I think that's a huge opportunity for us. It uh, provides huge opportunities in so many ways, uh, e economic of course as well, but so many opportunities of course for our own, for the benefit of our own community. So I'm afraid that's li quite literally all I have the time for <laughs> before I dash off. 
So it, it leaves me only uh, to, with great pleasure. My final duty uh, is to introduce uh, Dr. Ranga and uh, Chatterjee, uh, who many of you in Guernsey will know from his previous visit, uh, and who will take the show from here. Good. Thank you. Good morning. How are you all feeling? So I learned a new phrase this morning, just before I came in. Um, I can't remember. Oh, there. There you are. So I heard about a new phrase called a gurn. I'd never heard what a gurn is. So just to show that I'm down with the locals, um, how many gurns are there in here? And how many non-gurns do we have? Right, okay. So quite a mix. I couldn't quite clarify whether a gurn is someone who lives in Guernsey or is actually born and bred. So if anyone knows the answer, I'd be delighted. Born and bred. Okay, fine. So we seem to have at least a 50-50 split of people from the islands and not from the islands. And I'm, you know, I'd, always, I'd ask everyone here to have a little think about why you are here today. What is it you're hoping to get out of it? I'm here for a variety of reasons. I think my mind is likely to be blown by some of these presentations today. I'm likely to learn something new. Having been a doctor for nearly 16 years now and seeing tens and thousands of patients, I am convinced that you can live to 100 in good health. And I'm convinced that we often don't help that process. And I'm also convinced that we can probably learn a lot from today that we can go back into our own lives and apply. And I think I'm here for those selfish reasons as well. I'm here to learn and see, can I do something, age 39, can I do something in my life that's going to mean that I can actually reap the rewards? But also as a father, can I start designing an environment in my house, in my local community, that is going to benefit my children? And I, I must admit, that's a really compelling reason why I'm here today. So slightly selfish, I guess. But how many of you think it is possible for a large community to live to 100 in good health? Yeah. So a lot of hands. And how many who don't think it's possible? OK, so we've got, yeah. So, OK, that's super interesting. So we do have some people who don't feel that is possible. And I'd be interested at the end of the day to see if those maybe five or six hands, whether they still feel the same way. I had the privilege yesterday of meeting one of Guernsey's centenarians, um, Mr. Dagari. Mr. He is 103 years old. And I went uh, with a couple of friends, a couple of new friends that I've met. And we knocked on his door. And he came and answered his own front door at 103, invited us in. We went and sat down with him and, and spoke to him for about an hour or so. And quite remarkably, when talking to him about how he's got to 103, very positive, very, very happy outlook, very, um, I guess his whole life, he's never really thought about health. Health has just happened by default. He was a grower, so he always has eaten his own food. Um, he would only eat fruit like plums, for, for example, in July. He said they're not going to ripen until July. So when they're ripe for a week or two, he'll eat them, but he won't eat them for the rest of the year. I asked him about alcohol. He said, I enjoy to drink, you know, but my wife and I, we'd probably go out every few weeks or so and enjoy a glass. And he'd spoken about this brioche, this um, a particular kind of brioche. Gosh. And he says, yeah, I love that. Because I was asking him about sweet treats. And he goes, yeah, I love that. I said, how often would you have it? Oh, maybe at Christmas. <laughs> um, and it, and it, really, I found it a very inspiring hour. And I learned a lot from from this chap who probably didn't go and didn't need to see his doctor till he was about 90 years old. I think that kind of says it all, and I say that as a doctor. Um, so I think we're going to learn a lot about what are those consistencies from people like Mr. Degari that we can learn and apply.